The original challenge for me was, was to keep myself something to focus on in, in the future while I was having treatment. I dug deep into my own pockets and decided to do Kilimanjaro. I got a couple of messages on my phone. Matt, is that you up the rock with a tyre? And I was like, no, why? Said, well, there's a lunatic up there dragging a tyre up the top of the rock. You go to a bit of a dark place and you're looking at your own mortality and how it's going to affect your kids and your wife. And, you know, I, I was pretty dark thoughts. And I couldn't possibly imagine what it's like to have gone through the big C, right? I had to sit down with my wife, first of all, to, you know, and tell her, tell her the results, what, what came back. And, you know, it, she broke down and, you know, you, you're trying to be strong. There was a time when I was going through some pretty harsh treatment and I wouldn't let my daughters come to see me in the hospital because I didn't, didn't want them to see me like that. He's literally picked himself up, he's felt bad, he's been in a dark place, but he's given himself a target, a goal, something to live for. You're dragging that weight, physical, mental baggage. We're going to drag that up there and we're going to prove that anyone out there struggling, you can struggle, you have got that baggage, you do have that weight, but you can drag it and you can get to the top and you can come out the other side. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, pronouns of your choosing, welcome back to the Firefighters Podcast. When's the last time you pushed yourself? When's the last time you set yourself a challenge that you thought might be too much for you? Now imagine you actually did it. Why was the reason you did it? The reason you did it would be because the reason behind it, the cause, the challenge, was more important to you than the perception of the pain you were going to have to go through to achieve it. Now what if you're the sort of person that makes a regular habit out of doing this sort of stuff? Today, I'm welcoming back my brother from another mother, Matt Coulthard, who is once again taking on an epic physical challenge for a really worthy cause. The thing I always love talking to Matt about and what's going to be demonstrated today is that value of association, the people you put yourself around. And today, we're going to be speaking with Simon Morgan. Simon's a good friend of Matt's, and these two savages are part of a team of six individuals who are going to be summiting the Rock of Gibraltar 24 times, which is over 9,000 meters, so taller than Everest. And just to add that extra little bit of spice, they're going to be dragging a car tire attached to a chain for the entire journey. This is such an epic challenge, and I'm always excited to talk to people who are really pushing themselves. Once again, and it's becoming a common theme on the podcast, this is being done in aid of cancer relief, and Simon shares with us today his really personal story about why this is so important. Just want to say a big thanks to our partner of the podcast, William Wood Watches, being along for the journey and bringing this episode to you today. William Wood Watches are the creators of those beautifully crafted British luxury watches made from upcycled firefighting equipment. If you head over to their website, William Wood Watches, you'll be able to see their chivalrous, valiant, and their triumph collection. I've had my William Wood watch for going on three years now, and I get no end of comments on the red watch strap. Now, these upcycled straps are just one of the unique pieces about the watch. For example, my red strap comes from the London Fire Brigade red hose. You've got the tine and weir hose that makes up the blue strap. Our British Armed Forces bring us the green fire hose. We've got the West Mids yellow fire hose and the William Wood Watches Elite Fire Kit one. There's so much detail that goes into these watches. Despite just being a lover of what William Wood watches do, I am also incredibly proud to say that last year they donated £40,000 to firefighting charities. So to get your hands on your beautifully crafted British luxury watch made from upcycle firefighting equipment, head over to williamwoodwatches.com. There's the big man himself. Hello, uh, Sexy picture, I started laughing. <laughs> 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 oh man, it's so good to hear your voice. Simon, how are you, brother? Yeah, really good, thank you. Fantastic. Let's do it. Matt, Simon, welcome to the Firefighters Podcast. How are you doing, fellas? Really good today, thank you. Great, great to be back on. Great to be talking to you again, my friend. Mate, the, the articulate, handsome, devilish Matt Coulthard. And now he's a spoken for man as well. Congratulations on the uh, on the marriage to that lady that's way above your uh, punching. But, you know, nonetheless, she's obviously chosen to scrape the barrel. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you very much, my friend. You know, I'm like, I'm always punching. Oh, I'm good, I'm punching so mate. Hey, shy kids don't get sweets, mate. I always say to people, you know, you know when you see that really, really stunning woman walking around with a guy and you're like, how did he get her and I'm like he just asked he probably just asked you know what I mean? <laughs> and whenever I've spent time with you and, and my family have seen you and met you my daughter's always like god I love that guy and she's obviously 20 30 years younger than you but it's about the type of person and, and I think that's what attracts people to you and that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today because lo and behold you have found another savage individual to share in a really tremendous cause and it's why I wanted to have you both on Simon can you just give us a little bit of a brief on sort of what we're here talking about today and why it's so important well, I'm just here to raise awareness for a charity that's really close to my heart. Um, they've done a hell of a lot for me, psychologically as well as physically. And 
I want to give back to them, and they're called the Cancer Relief Fund in Gibraltar. I love that. I mean, cancer is sadly one of those things that I think we all have in common in a weird way. And I don't mean that to generalize it, but I think when we were doing the statistics for the pink challenge that we recently did, it's like one in two people are going to be affected by cancer at some point in their life. And I think even the breast cancer stuff that we do is like one in eight. And I apologize if they're not the most up-to-date statistics, but it really is sadly such a thing that we should all be really getting behind. And it's why, you know, when I heard what you guys are doing, and especially, you know, you, you tickled my, um, you tickled the fitness button as well. Something that's savage. I mean, any effort that people make is fantastic. But what you guys are choosing to uh, set yourself against is is a pretty colossal thing. I suppose it's almost like a warm up, which sounds silly when we're about to talk about what it is. But it's kind of a warm up for what you're going to be doing as well, Sai. So what is the, um, what's the challenge that you guys have set yourselves to, to raise this initial fund and then to support the work? The original challenge for me was, was to give myself something to focus on in, in the future while I was having treatment. I dug deep into my own pockets and decided to do Kilimanjaro this February. And along the way, I'm training, and I then I thought, you know, well, why not raise money while I'm training uh, to, you know, to raise more awareness? So I then come up with doing 24 times up the rock, to which is the height of Everest, just over the height of Everest. And then I wrote Matt in here uh, with me. <laughs> He's as stupid as I am. <laughs> I bet he just heard about it and he was just, just jumping and jumping like an excited child, if, uh, I, know, if I know Matt any too well. Yeah. Well, I was sat there thinking, what other fool can I get to do this with me? <laughs> <laughs> Funny how it came about, right? Because I got a couple of messages on my phone. Matt, is that you up the rock with a tyre? And I was like, no, why? Said, well, there's a lunatic up there dragging a tyre up the top of the rock. And I mean, the inclines <laughs> up there are off the chart. So people are messaging me saying, there's only people like you who are stupid enough to do it. And I rang three or four lads. All right, is it you? No, is it you? Get to the time, is it you? Yes, it is. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I can imagine, like you say, that culture that you've got on Gibraltar because it's a, it's a beautifully small island still as well. And I imagine the community aspect of things is, is so strong there. But there's only uh, there's only a couple of freaks out there that be doing that sort of thing. So I wanted to just double click for a second, Si, because you said something really significant there about having something to focus on. Was that when you were sort of going through your, your treatment? Because you yourself have been diagnosed, or you were diagnosed with cancer once, but you've had... Twice, twice. Twice, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Just expand on that for me, if you will, because I think that's a really important thing, and I don't want to skip on it. What happened during that process? And you talked about having this future goal. Well, the uh, the second time was uh, was probably the worst one for me, because you, you, you go to a bit of a dark place, and you look at your own mortality and how it's going to affect your kids and your wife and your, you know, your family around you. And... Um, and I, I, I needed counselling because, you know, I, I was, I was I had pretty dark thoughts and, uh, you know, I, I went to the centre, I explained what was, how, what I was, how I was feeling and, you know, they were there for me and um, they got, uh, I, was, I was sat down with a counsellor and this is all for free. These, these guys go out of their way and do so much, not just for the patient yourself. They do things, if your family wants to go in, just for a cup of tea and a chat and they're, they're there. And the only funding these guys get are from are from donations. I think what you say there about the, the family aspect as well, because I've been spoken to people that are either going through it or who have lost somebody, sadly, to cancer. I feel like, it sounds weird, but like, when you're dead, it's, it's game over for you. You don't have to live with it anymore, if that's, obviously, if that sounds obvious, but it also sounds right. But your family have to go through it and then live with it if you don't make it through. And the people that I've spoken to have said that they feel really strange seeking support for themselves because it made them feel a little bit selfish because obviously they want to support the person that's going through the treatment and any available resources, any available support they feel should be going to them. But that sort of colossal weight that it places upon that person, especially like for yourself, for your, for your partner, you know, man, woman, whoever it may be for people out there, they are facing a future, an uncertain future of financial burden. You've got children. I mean, you know, I love what you shared before we came on the podcast about having to go through that process the second time. I mean, for one, after you've gone through such a journey the first time, what did it feel like the second time? Was it kind of a, you know, what's the point? You know, why me? Is this just going to keep relapsing, relapsing, relapsing? All this this damage. How did that second one really hit you? Well, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, was the, there was the why me? Non-smoker, never smoked in my life, lived a healthy lifestyle, always smashing different goals. And... Um, you know, I've got friends who smoke, absolutely nothing wrong with them. It's indiscriminate. It doesn't matter how healthy you are or how well you try to be. It, cancer is indiscriminate and it will, it will, it can, it can take anybody at any time. And, you know, it's, 
it, it, it was tough the second time, and it was a wide knee. And um, yeah, I, I did feel a bit sorry for myself, and I, you know, I said I did, I did need the help and to give myself focus. Because the training was really good for my focus, and unfortunately, it was it was during lockdown as well. And the only reason the only way you were allowed out your house was to train. And w- without that, without that focus and giving myself a drive and 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 booking that that trip like this year or it was next year at the time, yeah, I, I actually needed that focus. Mm. It, uh, it helps help big time. I love what you're saying there about a sort of uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, it's giving yourself an identity in the future. If that makes is that what yeah. I'm hearing there because it's like definitely knowing that, you, that you're going to be here next, that next year and you're you're determined and you're going to, you're going to beat it and you you know you're you're going to be there next year which is which is next year has turned into now and that, you know and, and I'm still carrying on oh mate don't hell me. yes <laughs> god damn hell yes <laughs> <laughs> preach brother preach <laughs> no, but you know what you're so right and I've, I've read this in in numerous books as well you know people from german concentration camps and things like that where the people that have survived through those things and i'm not saying either is you know, easy or hard or anything like that but some of them when somebody comes to a challenge it seems insurmountable they think the inevitable end is that they're no longer going to be here through through illness through disease through something that's going to take their life but if they are able to give themselves a why as to why they need to be here beyond it. For example, for some of them, there's there's a wonderful book about it. Their journey was, I'm going to tell the story of what it was like to be in these camps. Somebody needs to know this. Somebody needs to know what's happened when I was here. And for you, it sounded like, you know, you've, you've accessed all the support. You don't want to ever think about a case where people are in your situation and they can't access that support. So you've set that sort of goal where you exist in the future. And the thing that's going to happen requires you to exist. Am I hearing that right? Definitely, definitely. And, and being around to, to be there for somebody else as well. Like, this, is, this is what I want to make a difference to other people and let them know that there's help out there, you know, that there is a place that they can go and get help. If, if you're feeling these, these feelings, seek the help, if, you know, if you can't cope yourself. I mean, I, I, I can't even get life insurance anymore. And this is what was going through my head as well. You know? <laughs> I love that. So mortgage, mortgage kids, if, you know, if, I, if I'm gone, you know, that's it. And I just thought, you know, I, I, I'm not going to let this beat me. When you actually, ha- when it came time to say this to your partner and, and to your kids and stuff like that, for anybody that's going through a process like that, how did you do that? You said about you know getting counselling and getting support, but how did you do that? Talk us through when when you sat down and had to say it to your family again. How did you do it? What words did you use, and how did it go? You know? It was it was it was just a case of being honest with them. I had to sit down with with, with my wife first of all. And, you know, and tell her, tell her the results, what, what came back. And, you know, it, she broke down and, you know, you, you're trying to be strong. You know, I, I, I always t- showed a strong, strong face to them so that they would never see me as, as weak. There was, there was a time when I was going through some pretty harsh treatments and I wouldn't let my daughters come to see me in the hospital because I, I didn't want them to see me like that. I wanted them to remember, remember me as seeing me as, 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 the, as their rock. And not someone who's lying in a, in a bed um, with tubes coming out of them, and you know, and it, it sends selfish in a, in a way. But I didn't want them to see me like that. So yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's it's tough at times. It, it, it was tough. Man, I, I can't even begin. I just want to clarify on something as well because we keep speaking about support and stuff like that. I do just want to clarify for people because I know anyone that listens to this isn't going to be thinking this, but I'm going to put it in there anyway. You had already paid for all the Kilimanjaro stuff out of your own pocket. Yep. This, the money that we're looking yeah, to definitely. support, this is just for the charity, for the work they do. You actually already go Everything. ahead and set that challenge for yourself. And I love that aspect of it because, you know, there's, there's no good or bad way to raise money for charity, but the fact you've already, you've got skin in the game. Do you know what I mean? This is important to you beyond how successful the, the raising money for the charity is or isn't. And I said that when we did the, like, the recent Pink thing. I'm like, look, if a thousand people know about it, great. If 10 people know about it, it doesn't really matter because, yeah. you know, history will show that six men, they were here right now standing for something that's important, whether it changes the world or it changes one person. That is something that's going to stand the test of time and know that these people showed up and, and they did what they said they were going to do. Well, and I, I didn't only to pay for the, uh, the flight and the trip last year. I also got the tattoo. Yes. <laughs> so I was definitely committed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mate. I've got some tattoo. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I got the tattoo with, with Killy in the background. And 
I'm sure know, Matt's... Uh, Matt, well, you, well, you got in gear yet. Yeah. Where's your tattoo, what, I'm Matt? Actually looking. I haven't seen... He's, he's, at, he's covered in tattoos. So I know I've seen this one before. So he's got the, the charity logo on his arm as a mark of what they've done for him. That's how special it is. He's actually tattooed the logo of the, the cancer charity on his arm. And he's also got the Kilimanjaro Challenge Cancer Relief Gibraltar 22 tattooed on himself. So that, for me, just shows you the kind of mindset this man has, which I think everyone could strive to because... I couldn't possibly imagine what it's like to have gone through the big C, right? But what is consistent with anything you might have if you're battling cancer, with your battling mental health, is how do you deal with that? Now, you can allow it to just, you to go into that dark hole and not ever come out again. If you've just got friends around you, people that can support you, the charities that can support you, and just give you that little glimmer of light, that little bit of hope, just to get you back out of that hole and then give you something to look forward to, give you motivation to keep striving forward. And I think that's what Simon's shown so eloquently. He's literally picked himself up. He's felt bad. He's been in a dark place, but he's given himself a target, a goal, something to live for. That's from his own character, his own personality, his stoicism, plus the help and support he's got from this charity. That's the importance of what we're trying to give back to these people. And people who are out there suffering themselves are in that dark place and might not have anyone to talk to. They might not have these people to go and see them to help. But just for us having this conversation, they might listen to this and go, I'm going to go talk to someone. And if only one person is helped by what we're trying to achieve here, and we've done something positive definitely fantastic mate awesome. i love that i always feel like that these things and, and everything you know that let's acknowledge you know obviously the two of you but you've got jot you've got brian you've got gary all these people that come together it's almost like they all had their own cup of like you were saying there matt their own cup of support their own cup of motivation and even just that levity do you know what i mean i imagine simon when you're going through something like this it's hard sometimes not that you don't want to be around people close to you but it's hard to be around people that are really close to you because they're so focused on the thing that's right in front of you and then getting out there and spending time with with Brian with Gary with Jot, you know with with Matt and them giving you that levity there's nothing quite like being around firefighters to get a little oh, bit of levity and a little bit of little bit of reality sometimes <laughs> well, it's it's not just the levity it's the lunacy as well <laughs> they bring <laughs> so Matt just to clarify mate I'm sure that uh, you're you're not holding the team back because let's not forget you're training next to a guy that's you know gone through cancer and kicked its ass twice. So I'm sure you know Matt. Surely you're not struggling to keep up. How's Simon going on with the training? Actually, I'm going to take you back. So we're talking. I want to rewind a little bit on that question. So when Simon was going through his chemotherapy, we chat to him about it, and he always remained positive, upbeat. He's just showing me a little tattoo on his arm right now. And don't be afraid of the dark. You'll never walk alone. All the times we were talking to him, he would always remain upbeat, positive. I can't even imagine what was actually going inside his mind. But while we were out training, doing our stupid things, our, our challenges, Simon himself was out swimming, cycling, running. He never, ever stopped. He found something to keep his mind occupied. He found something to keep his spirit strong. And that was training, physical exertion on his body something to keep him going. He's, set, he's forever setting himself challenges. And he was always, always striving to keep going and keep his mind positive and strong. And I think that's one of the key points with life in general, whether you're, you're fit and healthy or you might be suffering from any uh, mental health or any other um, type of unwellness. Always try and remain positive. Always try to remain strong. Set yourself challenges. They don't have to be big challenges. Put them some simple things. But I think it's so important just for life in general that we do things that better ourselves a little bit every day, mm. a little bit to keep our mind strong, a little bit to keep our body strong. And it all comes together to give ourselves that mental strength, no matter what it is. I, so, I absolutely yeah. agree with you, mate. We were, you know, we were built to walk uphill. Our chemicals that induce that sort of life fulfilling feeling is designed when we push ourselves up against something. And I love what you said there about, you know, being in the ocean and being out on the road. Those things are such, they're such a leveler. Do you know what I mean? Because no matter what you've done in your life, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing ahead of you, the road is always the road. The water is always the the rock, the mountain, you know, Gibraltar. It's always going to be there. It doesn't judge you. You get in the gym, 100 kilos is always 100 kilos. It doesn't matter what you've been through or what you're going through. And it's always there. It's always there for anybody. Accessing those feelings and accessing that support and surrounding yourself with people are what you guys have done. You've just got to lean in and hope that somebody's going to be there. Hope that somebody, and when like, you know, you reach out through the dark like this and we're communicating over thousands of miles now, 
there are people out there of that same mindset that are just hopeful and optimistic. And some people call them an optimistic fool and say, oh, Simon, why are you out there doing that? You should be in there rehabbing. You should be in there taking your medication. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do yeah. all that as well. But I'm not going to sacrifice this. I'm not going to sacrifice what I know to be my purpose for being involved in something like this. I think that's so important. When I had the, the first chemo, I, I, I set myself a goal of doing a thousand kilometer triathlon. So I, you know, and I, I raised money for cancer relief. And before I even um, was diagnosed with anything, seven years ago now, did a charity ride for cancer relief um, from London to Gibraltar. Jesus. Which took uh, two, two, yeah. It was <laughs> bigger, obviously, because that's what you do. <laughs> two weeks of pure pain, mate. That was, uh, we did it in July as well. So we went not too fans <laughs> over the Pyrenees. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're, in, we're in Spain in the middle of July, cycling that over 200 kilometers a day. You know, I was raising money then for cancer relief. And then, and then ironically, you know, I, I obviously didn't know it was going to happen, became a patient myself. That is almost the most important thing of everything you've said right now, because so many people kind of let themselves off. And, and if, you know, if everyone's struggling with stuff, that's, that's absolutely fine. And we hope they get the support they need. But people might write this off. Do you know what I mean? They might go, oh, yeah, well, you know, if I got cancer, I'd probably do the same thing. No, you're getting it backwards. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like when people say, oh, when I get the job, I'll get a better attitude. Or when I get a better partner, I'll get a better attitude. I'm like, you're never going to get it unless you start that. You've got to start, you've got to reverse the equation. You were already doing this sort of stuff. You were already pushing yourself and supporting these causes long before you came somebody, you know, there's nothing wrong with people learning in reverse and going, wow, I've seen the support that's out there. Now I'm going to go and access it myself. But there's nothing to stop people going, I'm going to do this because I think it's the right thing to do. And then lo and behold, you know, if you should ever require that support, it, it, you know what I mean? So I'm talking about reversing that equation. Yeah. I think in so many things in life, people think, oh yeah, I, I'd do the same if I did that. But you haven't got to wait for life to hit you in the nuts for you to step up and do something like what you were doing. Definitely. And, and, and unfortunately, the statistics are, it's going to affect some, somebody, you know, close to you, if not yourself. And that, that's, that's just the way cancer works. It's statistically, someone yourself or someone you know will get it. So how have you actually been training for this? You say, you know, you, you saw this weird freak climb up and down a mountain, Matt. I mean, you're obviously applied. I mean, it sounds like Simon, <laughs> Simon doesn't need any support, but I'm sure you brought your savagery into play and thought, hey, should we do a bit of this? Should we do a bit of that? So just to clarify for people, you guys are going to be doing this event on the 29th of January, aren't you? Correct. Well, Simon is an absolute lunatic in his own right. So he's been up the rock dragging his tire around anyway, getting loads of comments and the, the village idiot lunatic who's done after dragging a tire up the rock. <laughs> and as you said before, there's a couple of us here who are the way, same way given. Anything that's a challenge and just seen as lunacy by others, we're all for it. Let's jump on board. So as soon as Simon uh, approached us, he's like, absolutely, let's jump on it. And you know what we're like. This kind of chain, functional training, as we call in the firefighter world, anything that um, helps promote natural physical attributes, we're all for it. So when Simon approached us, yeah, jump straight on board. So I actually only started my uh, tyre or sled and drag training yesterday for the first time in two years. <laughs> I love that. So I'm a little <laughs> bit behind on the thing, but I'm just hoping that... Um, Sheer ignorance and uh, that, strength. That and is what it is. What platform are you using for the donate? Because we're going to put the link in the notes anyway. But where? How do they donate? So we've set up a Just Giving page. I think from popular demand, the Just Giving have now done away with their automatic contribution to their own company, and all the proceeds go straight to the charity that you've chosen to replicate, which is the Cancer Re uh, Relief Centre Gibraltar. And you can find me on Facebook, Matt Coulthard, or on Instagram, which is Matt D Fire Thirteen. You'll find out my Just Giving page there and all proceeds pop it does. And again, what people, some people like might not earn as much as some others. £10 could be a lot of money to some people. So every little helps. It really, really does. If everyone in the, in the whole of Gibraltar, for example, was to give £1, we're going to earn £35,000. Right. Do you know what I mean? That, that's the basic of it. If everyone just gives a little bit, doesn't matter how small or as much as you can give. Everything is appreciated no matter how big or small, anything we can do to try and give a little something back because it's just what you were saying a minute ago. You never know it's going to be you. It's going to be one of us. Like and so. it'll, be, it'll be nice to know that the support will be there if, if ever I was to need it or anyone in my family mm -hmm. was to need it. My friends, it's very likely you are going to need that. The other beautiful thing about this uh, event that Simon's come up with is we are going to be going up the Rock of Gibraltar. Now, just a normal walk up that hill it's a difficult walk. Now, we're going to go up dragging a tire, and I think 
the metaphor behind it is you're dragging that weight behind you, whether that's mental baggage, physical baggage, and all the horrible dark baggage that comes with it. You're dragging that up. And Simon's been through that physically, mentally. Yep. Now, metaphorically, we're going to drag that up there and we're going to prove to anyone out there struggling that you can struggle. You have got that baggage. You do have that weight, but you can drag it and you can get to the top and you can come out the other side. Well oh, good, mate. Well oh, good. Love that. Absolutely love it. Simon, I just wanted to ask a really personal question, if I could, because just to give, we, we talk about cancer and we talk about how hard it is. Could you just expand on what your personal experience with chemotherapy was? Because I've only seen it a couple of times and it's, it's, it's pretty tough to watch. To, to, to be honest with you, um, the, the kind of chemo that I got the last time, it's not a great feeling. It's um, pretty much like feel like you burned your insides out and um, the tiredness, I became anemic on it. Yeah, the anemia was pretty bad. You need vitamin B, then taking iron, all those kind of supplements to compensate the, uh, you know, the, the chemicals that they're putting through your body. Giving yourself focus, it's something, I said, see, that focus and talking helped me a lot. Drag my ass out of bed and go for a swim. I'd go for a bike ride. I'd go for a run. Even if I had to crawl, if I couldn't run, I'd go for a walk just to get out. And it was a tougher time then because as it, with lockdown, you, you couldn't socialize. I wouldn't have been able to organize anything like this. So everything I was doing was 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 by myself. So I'd see the guys down the beach and they go, "Hey, Simon, come down and do a bit of support." I tried to keep up with the swimming, but you know, you know, come drop back and help me out. And it, it, it it's tough. The treatment itself horrible. It's uh, yeah, not something I would recommend for anyone unless you have to. But no. yeah, it's not not nice. It's brutal. Before we close, I did just want to selfishly just have a quick check in to see how uh, how Matt is doing. A because I want to scope out the competition for the year ahead and the, the final yeah. challenges, but also. <laughs> Matt, you know, I know he's it, looking it's, buff, mate. He's looking buff. Is he? It's nothing in comparison to cancer, but Matt, you were you were struggling with your back for quite some time. I'm just checking if you're still a cripple first and foremost, and also just just seeing how you are, brother, because this you're about to undertake another colossal physical challenge. I know you did the swim, which was still hard as hell, but it allowed you not to have to lift and shift all the time. How how have you been coming back into that? You said this is your first training of, over like two years, so I don't want to get worried about you. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. Well, I, I, what I've learned to do is every time you come up against a challenge, mine was I got a discal hernia, well, I had a full-blown prolapse disc. Doctors, well, you might need surgery. You're very unlikely to train again. And that comes down to how you deal with that. You can allow yourself to go down that big dark rabbit hole uh, of misery and self-pity, or you can say, do you know what? That might be your diagnosis, but I'm going to see what I can achieve for myself. So I found swimming, like you said, off the back of the swimming. I can only swim at the moment because of my back. Let's do a charity event for the swimming. That's what we did back a couple of years ago. We swam around the rock. And then off the back of that, I slowly but surely nursed myself back to the health. And it's little things now. So when I go to the gym, I leave the ego at the door. I don't go chasing the big numbers or the big weights anymore. I train quality over quantity. And slowly but surely, trial and error, finding what works for me, what doesn't work for me. So I don't rear squat anymore because that's really loading the back. But I do front squat or the sissy squat. It's much better because it allows your back to go to the lateral alignment. You're putting less pressure on your lower back. And you're less likely to get injured. So I would recommend that to anyone generally who's training, don't chase the big weight numbers. Train quality. Look for other ways of training. For example, deadlifting, for example. So you can really load up your lower back doing normal deadlifts. Or you can just get the trap bar. Stand in there. Allows you to get neutral, natural alignment. And it's going to do exactly the same thing to you. But it's not. It's less risk of getting injury. Yeah. So that's what I've done. I've nursed myself so but surely. And I gave myself a goal. And it was, I spoke to John Gregory, our good friend over at the uh, Fresh oh, Fight Fight Challenge there. And he said, Matty, are you going to put yourself back in it or not? And I said, you know what? Go for it. So yeah, I put my name down. And now you're going to have to set that goal. And I said, it was a challenge. So it was like the following day after I set up, I said, right, I've got a man up. So I went out and did the dragon and pool session. Absolutely hated it, which means I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the acid buff burn feeling of the legs. Oh. I, if you've seen my Instagram uh, stories, yeah, you'll see yeah. one of my good friends, one of who's taking part in the challenge. It was amazing to watch him cry with the lactic burn. <laughs> Nothing seems me more than seeing a fellow fool like ourselves struggle. <laughs> <It's a laughs> Honestly, oh, man, I just thought, I want to like, I want to like, I want to breathe it in and just lick it when I see him. I'm like, oh, give me some of that. Give me, like, yeah, you just feel them yeah, going through that. Yeah. Because you know they're going through growth. 
You know what I mean? You see it and you're like, damn, you're growing. And give me some of that. You know, I envy people when they do, if they've never been in the gym before and they go in and do their first session and they're like crawling the next few days. I'm like, man, I miss that feeling because your body gets conditioned. Like you say, you've got to keep changing things. You've got to keep adapting. You've got to keep it up. So yeah, as we were saying with our friend Brian, he did the training with me yesterday. We finished that thing. He couldn't walk. He was giving it full blown Bambi. Even this morning, especially he said, I still can't walk. <laughs> when are we going to train again? Now that's the characters you want around you. People that are just like, that's, that's broken me. I can't do it. When are we going to do it again? Love that. And that's the kind of person I've got sitting next to me here. Simon, he's been through the worst of the worst. He's come out the other side and he's going to keep on striving more. Big fun of my face still. <laughs> and he's still smiling. In, in so many ways, people like yourselves really, I really, really admire it. Because for me, like you were saying, Matt, about sustainability and about adapting as, as things change in your life. And as, as we get older and stuff like that, it's a bit like the path narrows. I'm sure when you go up the Rock of Gibraltar or something like that, you come across these really narrow paths. And I feel like that's like a life analogy with health and well-being and stuff like that. Because you can get you've got a really wide path when you're younger. You can get away with some silly stuff. You can put some crazy stuff in your body and you can do things that weren't necessarily safe. But as we get into our 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, I like you say, my goal now is... I'm excited about being as fit and strong as I am now in 20 years time. I'm not, I don't want to break a personal best lifting anything. I want to adapt and keep pushing myself in ways that is sustainable. Because like I say, the margin, the gap gets so much smaller and you don't need to train harder, but you need to start training smarter. You can still push yourselves, but within a realm of, of understanding of what is sustainable for your body. 100%. Absolutely love that, fellas. Thank you so much for, for coming on and spending time today. We'll, we'll get this boxed off and punched out as soon as humanly possible. I really look forward to following you guys online and seeing how you do it. And I know Matt and I have been chatting about maybe putting something together in the future. It's still on my list to get out there and, and spend time with the family and yes, congratulate you guys on the wedding and maybe do something savage together. So hopefully if I'm able to make it out there. But in the interim, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. And... Uh, really proud to be part of this and supporting what you're doing could I give a shout out to my cousin no uh, Pat, 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 Pat McElhenney <laughs> to Pat McElhenney and the boys at uh, Fort William Fire Station please absolutely man we always love connecting everybody Fort William Fire Station thanks for everything you do brothers thanks for keeping everybody safe out there if you do know somebody in your emergency services everybody give them that little bit of love give them that little bit of support and if you've got a cause that needs some support wrangle them in grab them tell them it's for charity tell them it's for a good cause you'll be surprised what people in that sector are willing to do when they know it's a great cause right fellas i'll wrap it up there. Brother, thank you cheers buddy much much appreciated i hope you're training because i'm coming through oh, <laughs> mate, I'm, out there. I'm doing it honestly i'm trying god damn it there you go folks two incredible people Matt Coulthard, Simon Morgan. They've also got Jock, Alan Stevenson, Brian Fleming, Gary, Richard, Edward Evans as well. All those guys are going out there, kicking ass, taking names for another great cause. The Gibraltar Everest Challenge is taking place on Saturday, the 29th of January, 2022 at 0900. That is their time, not our time in the UK. So get over to their social media platforms. Give them some support. And like Matt was saying there, you know, anything you're able to support them with, even if it's just a case of sharing it, you know, because there'll be people out there who are in a position where they feel like they may be able to contribute some support whether that's financially whether that's through the organizations that they belong to so please give this a little bit of support you know one of the favorite things about the podcast is that we're able to engage with people like this and give them some exposure for a great cause so jump on down there have a look at the notes and to stay tuned with any future outcomes of the podcast and to catch the latest episodes make sure you hit that subscribe button and a massive thanks from me a massive thanks from matt and simon look after yourselves stay happy stay healthy stay hungry and we will see you again real soon right here on the firefighters podcast Oh, 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 oh,